Matthew 26. And it came to pass when Jesus finished all these sayings, 24, 25, he said unto his disciples, He know that after two days, the feast of the Passover, and the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. So Jesus has got two days left of life. Passover, he's crucified, 6 p.m. Then they assembled together the chief priests, plural, there's two of them, the scribes, those in charge of the scriptures, the elders of the people, that's the head honchos, supposed to be the wisest, unto the powers of the high priest. Hey, look at that, he's limiting the powers, who was called Caiaphas. And consulted that they might take Jesus by subtility. Run that back to Genesis chapter 3. That's the serpent. Revelation chapter 12, that serpent is the devil. You're going to see the devil show up twice in this. You're going to show the devil show up three times. Chapter 24, the desolation and abomination spoken about Daniel the prophet, the Antichrist. That's the devil. And kill him. Wow, that's, that's a great grump of people. They're talking about God, their Messiah. <clears throat> But they said, not on the feast day, Passover, at least there be an uproar among the people. Everybody fears the Jews in an uproar. The Romans fear it. The, the, the heads of the people. I mean, it just comes down. You don't get an Oriental. You don't get a Middle Eastern mad. And right now, I'm going to say, I mean, we're dealing with China. Don't get a mad. You know, we didn't win Korea and we didn't leave win Vietnam. We had to leave. Or else if we didn't leave and pull out, we'd be fighting them. <clears throat> now, when Jesus was in Bethany, pay attention. We're going to learn some things tonight. In the house of Simon, the leper. That's interesting. What's Simon the leper doing in the house? He's supposed to be outside the gate. Unclean, unclean, unclean. There came unto him, notice the, the word Simon too. Notice there came unto him a woman, a woman, a woman, having an hour bastard box, and I moved my ugly face over. One way. Our Bastard Box, Webster's 1828 Dictionary, a subvariety of carbonate of lime found in large mass formed by depositation of calcareous particles in the caverns of limestone rocks. These concessions or concessions had a bottle fibrous or gradual structure and are in pure white color. That's interesting. More generally, they are presenting shades of yellow, red, or brown. In undulating concept stripes or spots. All right, you're mad at me because I can't read. We'll go over to Numbers. We'll go over First Chronicles. We'll see how well you can read. Among the ancients, alabaster was also named in a vessel which older furfurous liquids were kept. That's the one we're looking at. It's, it's, it's a box. It's a canister. It's a j jar, jug, so called, so called for the stone that was made of. So the box, the, the container is the alabaster, which is white. So alabaster box. I know on the title I show a bottle. A very precious ointment. So the box is alabaster. In it is very precious ointment. You, you put ointments or you put liquids in it. And poured it on his head as he sat at me. That must have been really commotion. Jesus having a, a meal. This woman comes in, takes her box or, 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 or canister, boom, dumps it on his head. But when his disciples saw it, they had indignation. They are extremely mad. That's what indignation means. 
These disciples get an indignation almost all the time. They find out Peter went to the Gentiles. <laughs> saying, to what purpose is this waste? Precious ointment. It's a waste. Now, I'm not going to say nothing now. We're going to look at the other gospels. We'll look at the other gospels. We'll let scripture with scripture. For this ointment might have been sold for much and given to the poor. Somebody's a Democrat. When Jesus understood it, he said unto them, Why trouble ye the woman? For she has wrought a good work upon me. For, for ye have the poor always with you, but me you have not always. All right, so go tell the Democrats, go tell the socialism, go tell the uh, communism. They're not going to work. You're always going to have the poor people. By the mouth of God, but they don't believe God anyway. So what Jesus said, <clears throat> this woman has come in, interrupted the whole meal, dumped on his head this ointment, precious ointment. For in that she poured this ointment on my body, head, she did it for my burial. There he goes, talk about the gospel again. Because remember, they hurry up and take the body off the cross. They hurry up and put him in the grave. Because we got to hurry up because it's getting late. The Sabbath is coming. We can't work during the Sabbath. The women come the first day of the week to bring their ointments because they had to hurry up. Jesus' body was not properly Jewishy. If I can say that word, that's a word. Not you can add it to the dictionary. They add words all the time. So this woman comes in, the ointment for his for his body. She did it for my burial. That's interesting. This woman sees the burial of Jesus. Very, I say to you, wheresoever the gospel shall be preached in the whole world, whole world, look at that. The only whole world they know is they know about China, they know about Spain, they know about Africa, they don't know nothing about us over here in the New World, the, the Americas. So there should be in your which I I preached. <clears throat> There should be in your ministry at least once that you mentioned this woman per commandment of Jesus. There shall also this that this woman has done be told for a memorial for her. Then one of the twelve called Judas Iscariot went into the chief priests. Now remember, they're already having their shin bing dang. How can we kill him? In walks Judas. Quinky dinky. Isn't it marvel that they're talking about killing Jesus? In comes Judas. What do you want? He's one of his disciples. And said unto him, What will you give me that I will deliver him unto you? Well, boy, did the room go quiet. And they coveted, see the covet? You know, the nuns live in the covenant, covet? With him for 30 pieces of silver. And from that time, they saw opportunity to betray him. You see, I mean, we say God works in the right time. So does Satan. They're talking about killing, and I believe at that moment they're talking about in the door opens or somebody knocks on the door, and here comes Judas. Hey, what will you guys give me if I give you Jesus? Man, I'll tell you right now, you didn't see the faces light up in that room. So... Mark 14. Gospel Mark 14. Verse 3. <clears throat> well, we'll do verse 1. After two days was the feast of Passover. All right, we got that down. 
Jesus has got two more days to live. And the unleavened bread that comes after the Passover. And the chief priest described saw how they might take him by craft. Craft means subtility. You see, you don't need the Hebrew and the Greek. You need the Bible. Scripture is scripture. You just learn what the word subtility means. I didn't have to go to Webster's 1828 dictionaries. You know what crap? Your craftiness. Crap. You know, how can we, with talent of being subtle as Satan, to get him? What is it? Judas. Oh, wait a minute. What do you want? It's a disciple of Jesus. Hey guys, what can I, what will you give me if I give Jesus unto you? Whoa! But they said not on the feast day. At least there'd be an uproar among the people. They're, they're afraid of the people. Being in Bethany, get that. That was the house of dates, I think it was. In the house of Simon, there he is, the leper. As he sat at me, here's a bunch of people sitting with a leper in Bethany in, Ju in, Ju in Israel, Judah. Are we not violating the scriptures? There came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. All right, that's the ointment, spikenard. She break the box and poured it on his head. Well, Jesus is to be broken. When you got the oil for the candles, you're to break, you're to crush the olives. Don't press him. There were some that had indignation with it within themselves. Now, in other words, they didn't make it vocal and said, why was this waste of this ointment? There's the waste. There was some, bro. Matthew said they were the, where they were the, the disciples. I apologize. My nose is itchy from the oxygen cold. So, according to Mark, there were more than just the disciples sitting there angry. Why was this waste of ointment made? Look at that. This woman gave what she had for Jesus, and they called it a waste. You know, there are some people that will go in church, and the littlest thing they will give to Jesus, and other people, <laughs> look at that. Better keep your mouth shut. For it might have been sold for more than 300 pence. That's 300 days of work. Remember the pence, the penny? Penny a day? That's 300. Philip said it came to the bread. 200th worth of pennies where I couldn't buy enough bread. This is more than that 200. And had been given to the poor. Oh, here we go. The Democrats again. And they murmured against her. Huh. You imagine what that woman felt like? She walks in this room. She loves Jesus. This is all she, this is the most precious ointment the Bible says. How she got it, where she got it, we don't know. But it's got to be the most precious thing she had, and she breaks it, and she gives it to Jesus. His own disciples are ranking on the woman. They murmured against her. And Jesus said, let her alone. Bride, trouble you here. She has wrought a good work on me. You know, at the judgment seat of Christ, a lot of Christians are going to be shut up. And Jesus is going to say, hey. Oh, Lord, it's the only thing I had. There's nothing else I could. Well done. There'll be a lot of Christians. Put, that was well done. You see how many ashes I got? And that was well done. Yep. For ye have the poor always with you always, okay? Democrats, socialists, communists, you're not going to end the poor. 
Jesus said it twice. And whensoever ye will, whensoever ye will, ye may do them good, but me ye have not always. So, I mean, you're going to help the poor. You're going to take care of the poor. But guess what? I'm going home. I'm not going to be here always. Look at that. Prophesying while he's sitting at dinner. She has done what she could. She has come aforehand to anoint my body to the bury. Now, does she know about the gospel? What does she know? Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole... What, this gospel, what's the gospel? He just said the burying. The gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. Look at that. You think the disciples understood? Where are they when it comes to the actual gospel, when he actually died, when he's actually buried, and he actually resurrected from the grave? They're in the upper room. Shall be preached through the whole world again. America's. America's not even known. This also that she has done shall be spoken in memorial for her. Again, I'm saying you ought to preach about this woman. And Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went unto the chief priest and to betray him unto them. And when they heard it, they were glad and promised to give him money, and he sought how he might conveniently betray him. So Judas doesn't have a plan yet. He hasn't been paid yet. Okay. Gospel of John, two, uh, no, 12. Gospel of John, 12. I'm going to show you something. I'm going to show you something. Even the commentators get this wrong. Okay? Pay attention, write in your Bible. Notice this. Who was the guy's name in the other two, uh, other two Gospels? His name was Simon. He had leprosy. Six days before the Passover. What were the other days? Weren't they two days before the Passover? This one's six days. Came to Bethany. Okay, same place, Bethany. Where Lazarus, not Simon. This is four days before the two days of Simon the leper, which had been dead whom he had raised from the dead. There's a resurrection. Here's a woman four days coming ahead. Here's a woman after a resurrection of a dead body. She's bringing ointment for the burial of the body. The gospel's throughout it. They made a supper, okay? there's a, Everybody's having a supper. Martha served. Martha wasn't at the other one. By the way, Martha's new servant. She never gets it right. But Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then Mary. This is not the woman of Matthew and Mark. She's unnamed. This one's name. Mary is the sister of Martha, the sister of Lazarus. A pound of ointment sparkle. There is no alabaster box mentioned. She just brings a pound of ointment and spicknard. The other woman brought spicknard, but she had it in a valuable case that she broke. Very costly. All right, we take the both women. It's very costly. Anointed the feet of Jesus. Matthew said she poured it on his head. So Jesus is being anointed from head to toe. Take that head and take that foot of Jesus, the feet of Jesus. Go back to, to Genesis 3.15 and look at what it says about the foot, the heel, and the head. 
with subtility, they want to catch Jesus. You're, you just ran back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, and you just ran back to Genesis chapter 3, verse 15. Look at that. And wiped the feet with her hair. Well, that's not the other woman. And the house was filled with odor of the ointment. So this, this spike nard smells good or has an odor. Then says one of his disciples, now watch, watch, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. Now I'm not saying Simon the leper, but notice how Simon comes up. Simeon. There's another man that has a reference to Simeon or Simon. Peter. Peter's father's name is Simon. I believe Simeon was the son that Joseph put in jail. Why did he choose Simon or Simeon? I have no idea. So here's Judas Iscariot, Simon's son. Iscariot means a man of a man of Caria. So Judas is a half breed Jew. The Antichrist is going to be half Jewish, half Gentile. Or at least his false prophet. There's the false prophet right there. Which should betray him. Why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to him? So two times this event happens with two different women. And both times, listen, listen. Two days later, this same thing happens and they still get upset. He's been anointed by his head two days before the, before his death. He's been anointed by his feet. And this happens four days before his death. The disciples did not get and understand the, 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 the gospel. Look at that. They would have said when... The woman in Simon's house, oh, that's for his death, burial, resurrection. No, they murmured, complained, and griped. <laughs> and it has happened two days ago in Lazarus' house. The disciples didn't get it. It says, disciples, Simon's son, Judas, why was his ointment not sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? Then said, then he said, not that he cared for the poor, Judas, because he was a thief, Judas, held the bag. He's, the, he's Jesus' treasurer. And he was a thief. You didn't think Jesus knew? And bear what was put in therein. Judas handed the funds of Jesus' ministry, and he was a thief. That's why later on when we read in the gospel, he's at the supper, and they thought, well, he's going to go get some more money for more food. Because he held the treasury. Now he's going to get more money so he can betray Jesus. Then said Jesus, let her alone. Against the day of my burying has she kept this. Here we go. For the poor always you have for the poor always you have with you. But me you have not always. So he says the same words twice. Verily, verily. You hear about you always got the poor with you more than you hear the birth of Jesus. And there are churches out there trying to, with the government, trying to take care and alleviate the poor. Jesus says, no way, you're not going to do it. Much people, the Jews, therefore knew that he was there. And they came not for Jesus' sake only, but that they might see Lazarus also, whom he raised from the dead. <laughs> now watch this. Both the chief priests consulted that they may put Lazarus to death. Not only do they want to kill Jesus, 
Now they want to kill Lazarus. Because Lazarus is a living testimony <laughs> to the work of Jesus. Now notice, all right, on the next day, verse 12, much people were coming for the feast. They heard that Jesus was coming. There's the Palm Sunday. There is no mentioning of Judas going to the chief priests at all. That's two days later. You know why Judas went to the, to the priests at Simon's house? That guy ripped me before the disciples about a woman putting oil on him. That was costly. We could have taken care of the poor people. Judas was mad at Jesus. And he went and betrayed Jesus over these two women. And we're told he was a thief and he held the bag. He wasn't caring for the poor. He was, he was going to do something where he could get more money. You know how you get more money? Go to the chief priest and get 30 pieces of silver. You know, Peter got mad at Jesus, too, before Jesus died. Peter wanted to wipe out everybody who wanted to conquer Jesus. He even cut a man's ear off. Jesus said, put up the sword. Fix the man's ear. Peter is so angry. Well, aren't you one of them? Oh, blankety, blank, blank, blank. No, I'm not. That moment that the rooster crewed, and Peter sees Jesus looking at him. Oh, boy. And when you talk about the chief priest acting like the serpent, Genesis 3, who is the devil, Revelation 12. And you got the anointing of his, of Jesus' body, of anointment that is costly, poured upon Jesus. Why was this ointment not sold? Why was it wasted, said Judas? Judas thought, hey, that, putting it on Jesus is a waste. Better sell it and put it in my bag. That angered Judas so much, he went to the high priest. Give me some money. How dare Jesus rip me in front of those disciples? After all, I, you know, Democrats, I want to help the poor people. And it's funny how the Democrats want to help the poor people, and they live in mansions, they live in you know, swimming pools, and they got limos, and they got airplanes. They travel all over the world. They go on their, their cruises. They're, I mean, it's just no problem for them. You're going to tell me you're going to, you, you care about the poor, what you're doing? Oh, look. Oh, look. You see, he's at a soup kitchen helping. He's at the soup kitchen when the cameras show up. And that may not be a soup kitchen because you know what? You can do anything you want on a Hollywood stage when you pay people to act. It may not be a soup kitchen. Oh, look at all these poor people in Indiana. Look at these little flies. And you see how sad it is. If you give a dollar a day for 30 days, these people. How do you know they're in that in there? How you know they're not in Los Angeles? All right. Quiet, everybody. We're going to take a take. Get those cows on the stage now. Fix that girl so she looks poorer. That's how I believe it. I don't believe the news. The only news I believe is when I hear from a Bible-believing missionary where he is in the world. I believe that news. It's already been proved the news is fake <laughs> in many cases. I mean, you think about it like this. If you ever watched Dragnet, 
This is a true story. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. Well, if you change the names, our race not true. Okay. Uh, we're in Los Angeles. It was cold and messy and all that. And uh, Jack Webb gets up there and says, I, my name is Friday. No, it's not. It's Jack Webb. So, true stories. The names have been protected. Jack Webb says he's somebody who's not Friday. He's not Friday. He's Webb. I'm a police officer. No, you're not. You're an actor. You're a liar. And, you know, you're on a stage. You're on a sound stage. You're not in, well, you may be in Los Angeles, but you're not where you say you are. And if you shoot the gun, it's not a real gun. It's a rubber gun. It's got blanks. My partner is, he, he may not be your partner. You, you, you two may not stand each other. You know, to go boldly where no man's gone before. You haven't gone in outer space. You're on a, you're on a stage. You make a movie about the Titanic. You're not on the Titanic. You're on a model. But that's okay because the Baptist churches are doing. You, you get the, you get your little son up there. I'm Moses. Lord, part the Red Sea. You're not Moses. You, be you better shut up. You do not have enough to be Moses. After you disobeyed last week and stole a cookie, your mom told you not to take the cookie. You're not Moses. The Bible says Moses was very meek and met God face to face. Don't you even dare. Don't you even dare get up on the, your, your, your stage altar. I'm Jesus. You better not. They got this television program. I guess this guy says he's Jesus. And, you know, he's involved in all these cults. He hangs out with all these wrong people. They, they, and they got it on Facebook. They'll show you the picture. That's not Jesus. Oh, Mary. Mary, does you know? Well, Mary knew. You're not Mary because, first of all, you're not Jewish. You're not a special woman who God chose to carry the vessel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? People get, I'm John the Baptist. Oh, really? Would you have for dinner? What did you have for breakfast? Four oh, eggs. <laughs> John the Baptist didn't have eggs. Listen, if, if you had a swarm of locusts, all you had to do was call John the exterminator. Because John would show up with a fork and spoon. And they'd be, ah! And it's funny because some of you don't even know what I mean. I don't know how I got off on that, but that's maybe the Lord said, tell him. You know, you never hear anybody say they're Judas. I know a church treasurer. I'm going to probably get crucified if somebody hears this. I doubt his salvation. You say, why? What would make you doubt? We're the judge things. The guy was a church tre treasurer. We would sit at the dinner table and he would tell us, hey, you know, this family got a raise. How do you know that? He gives more, more money to the church. What? This family don't give that much. But they make money. His email was Judas 2, number 2. And he laughed about it. He joked about it. I got at one point, I, I, I rebuked him. And he got mad. I said, okay, fine. We broke relationship. 
Because I told him, I think what you, I think you being Judas, bringing the treasure of of your church. I don't think that's funny. I can't imagine a Christian calling himself Judas. I mean, you don't hear anybody call it. Oh, that's a beautiful little girl that you got. What's her name, Jezebel? <laughs> you don't hear that. Maybe today you would. You know. How come you? How come? How come you get up on the stage now? It's not an altar no more. It's a stage, and you do your skits. You got the. Yeah, you know, it's so funny. We got we got this movie. It's a Christian movie made by Christian. I will tell them is that name of that character the real name of no? Then it's not Christian. Now there's one of them Christian movies I watch one. But the guy's not a policeman. The guy is not a professor in a college. One of them professes to be a, a Christian. I'm not going, but I mean, he didn't go around driving the 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 the, uh, the cruise ship. People will say, "Well, you know, this thing he had to be saved because he did. He sang an album of hymns and carols." How I got on all of that, I don't know. But there are two women, two different places. One has an alabaster box. One doesn't have any at all. One is the head of Jesus. The other is the feet of Jesus. One person gets angry at both episodes. And at one episode, he goes to the chief priest and says, hey, how much money are you going to give me? And two days before he does that, John tells us that he was a thief and the treasurer. All three cases, he is rebuked by Jesus. So by the time you get two days later, and it happens a second time, when he goes to the chief priest, he's angry with Jesus. And you learn about this twice, not once. Even my, my notes in Schofield Bible say, you know, it's, no, they're not the same. This is a verily, verily. And you learn about this one event in the life of Jesus. And you only get one time that Jesus was born. It took twice for Judas to get angry with Jesus. I mean, wouldn't you get angry? You're at a dinner party. And... Something, somebody says something about your daughter or your son. Unnice. The first time. Oh, who does that guy think he is? Guy doesn't even have children. All right, two days later, we're going to a dinner party. Okay. Somebody else comes up to the dinner party. What your son and daughter? The, and they say something. Oh, the same exact thing about your daughter or your son. Now you're piping hot. So was Judas. Don't ever say Judas didn't have a reason. Yes, he did. He was angry with Jesus. You better watch your anger. All right, let me tell you about anger. I can. This is not a rabbit trail. The Bible says, "Be angry." Okay, be angry. Don't sin. Judas. Oh, all right, Jesus. Come on, lay off me. Pick on Peter. How many times Pete, Jesus picked on Peter? He didn't get angry. We read twice that Jesus picked on Judas and he got angry. Now, Moses did not speak to the rock the second time. He, 
Damn, you, you guys. I'm tired of you guys. You know what Moses' problem was? You, you ever read the life of Moses? He got angry. In anger, he killed the the the, 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 the Egyptian. He get angry a couple times. God, why don't you just kill him? When God told him to speak to the rock, he got angry. He said, you, bam. Water came out of the rock, and God says, you're not going into promised land. When Aaron's sons, that Baihu and, and they had offered the strange fire, and they're, they're toast. God told Aaron and his family, you're to eat the sin offering. The sin offering is gone. Moses walks in, and he's, where is it? Aaron, you're supposed to eat it. Aaron's like, I, I think I know what Aaron's problem was. He, his two sons just died. Well, you know, we burned it because, you know. They're sitting in the camp because I'm angry at, at just what happened. I'm upset. I, I lost two sons. Moses was angry. Anger brought Lazarus, I mean, not Lazarus, brought Judas. He's so angry, he doesn't even have a plan yet. He just walks in. If you guys give me some money, I'll give you a date and time we can. Now it says the final time was two days before the Passover. Within two days, he concocts a plan. The garden where Jesus is going. Now when he actually came up with that plan, we don't know. But two days, he's at the Passover. He's having dinner with Jesus. They're having the last supper. Jesus says, who would have dipped the sop in plain? And Judas dips the sop, and he says, go do what thou doest. That's not complete, right, accurate saying. Judas gets up from the table and goes to the high priest and says, listen, he collects the 30 bucks, and they're on the way to the garden. And he says, you know, betrays the, the Lord with a kiss, walks up to Jesus and gives him a kiss. That this is the man. It's the middle of the night. They don't have street lights. I, I bet you that kiss was like, damn. Yo, me again. Then Jesus get, comes to thoughts and comes and realizes, what did I do? You, you know, you can get so angry. When you come out of your anger, it's worse than being intoxicated. What did I do? I've dealt with, I'm not giving no names, I'm not giving no prison. I dealt with one man who killed somebody. He was angry. Anger he killed. And when he came to himself in prison, he realized, what did I do? That's like the man, you know, he gets drunk, he goes to a bar, and he wakes up, he's got this strange woman with him. And, you know, nine months later, hey, he, this is your childhood. Sometimes you get so angry. You better not get so angry. The consequences. Israel got so angry in the wilderness. Come on. Let's get a group of people. Let's get a captain. Let's head back. Even Jesus got angry, but he didn't sin. Proverbs speaks about, you know, anger is as sin and uh, wrath is as something, heavy something, but then you get envy. This is the story of Judas. This is what brought Jesus to say, give me the 30 pieces of silver. There he is. He was called out by Jesus. The same thing over, just different people. Peter was called out. I mean, I don't know how many times Peter was called out. Now, maybe Jesus called out Judas a couple times. John tells us there are things that were written, that there are things that happened that could not be written. But the whole 
point of what we do read in the scriptures is Jesus spoke the truth. He reproved Judas. And Judas got upset. So when you're out there dealing with your family, you're out there dealing with your church, you're out there dealing with the lost people, you're out there preaching and teaching the Bible, and you reprove them, and they get upset, and they get angry, Judas did. I got churches that hate me. I got churches I'm not welcome back in their church because I reproved them. I showed them what the Bible said. I told them what the Bible said. I gave them evidence. I gave them names and, and dates of people who wrote books and know the subject and all that. And they do it to Judas. Don't come back. Here. Don't talk to me. Okay. See you later, Judas. Bye, Judas. Please don't go hang yourself. But Judas, there are people who don't go to church no more because they got stupidly angry with someone in that church or something that was said. My grandmother told me she went to a Baptist church, and Baptist church, you could bring any Bible you want. But, I mean, I heard that the preacher was good back then, way back then. This is the, this is long, this is when my, my, my dad and my my uncles and nephews were children. They brought them to the Baptist church. Now let me tell you this plain simple thing to Haywards. You don't want to have honor when you mention Hayward. It's kind of oh God. You know, you hear Hayward. Oh, oh no. I'm serious. I'm sorry to be a Hayward. I wish I could change my last name. I would change my last name to Pucus. Oh, a good name. It's a lot better than Hayward. Okay, Haywards don't have a good name. They don't have, and I can't get into it. But when my uncles and I'm going to be, I'm going to get reamed on this one. When my uncles and my aunts were young children in the Baptist church, my dad said him and my uncle Billy would go out the Sunday school classroom window. And go down and hang out by the trains and hop the trains to go to EB and Pfizer's. Instead of being Sunday school. I'm going to get fried for this. Somebody pulled my grandma off to the side and said, Mrs. Hayward, however they said, Edna, whoever. Sure, I'm going to get ringed. You got to do something about those children. Those children, and this is out of the mouth of my grandma. Those children. My grandma left that church and never went back. If I were to write a book about the Haywards, I don't know what section you would put that in a bookstore. But it wouldn't be clean. You would have to be an adult. Be able to read that book. I got a book over here. Bearing those bunch of junk. My brother told me, he said, he said, you know, we have a family member who was on the Mayflower. And they wrote a book about him. I said, wow, this is great. And I looked up the guy and got his book. And first, before he was on the Mayflower, he came over to America, to Virginia, and his boat wrecked. He and a bunch of people survived on this rock island. They survived on the crabs and the and the mussels and this hard life until they were rescued. There was no palm trees like the television program. All right, so he went back. He comes across on the Mayflower. I was like, wow, I've got a Mayflower Hayward. And he wasn't Hayward, it's another name, but he's in the family of the Haywards. Man, this is cruel. This is great. I read his story. I read his biography or whoever wrote it. He was on the Mayflower. When he got to the New World, he was arrested for gambling. He was arrested for Sabbath breaking. He was arrested for intoxicating people. I'm like, oh, there's the Haywards. 
He was anything but a pilgrim. He, was, he had nothing to do with the pilgrims. I said, yeah, that to be the Haberts. You can tell them I said that. I don't care. I got the proof. I got the truth. And they don't want to deal with me. They're already mad at me for things I've said anyway, so.